On today's photo moment, we're gonna learn how to turn the touchpad on the back of your Lumix camera into a focus trackpad control point thing. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here on YouTube at youtube.com slash photo Joseph, talking about all kinds of things photography related. It is at 9.30 a.m. Pacific as it is right now when I'm recording this live, but maybe not right now if you're not watching this live. But if you can't be here live, that's okay. But if you can, it's super awesome because you get to participate in the chat. I get to do this. You come up on the screen. Look, it's it's here. That's you. And if you want to get my attention, you type at photo Joseph, those of you watching live. If you want my attention, Type at Photo Joseph, and that way I know that you've got a question for me, and I'll do my best to answer the questions as we go, because that is, after all, the whole point of live. So today's show, we are focusing <laughs> on Lumix cameras and how you can turn the touchpad on the back of your camera, the LCD panel, into a focus control point trackpad. It's a crazy, crazy cool thing to be able to do. It's super easy to do, and once you set it up, you're probably going to never go back. It's just, it's kind of awesome. But before we get into that, I want to show you something. Remember last week, or maybe it was the week before, somewhere along the way, I showed you this illustration. So an artist out of the Philippines named Kwan has created these two illustrations for me. I asked him, I commissioned him for this, paid him for this, and I said, hey, I saw some work that he had done, I asked him to create those illustrations for me. And he did a couple different ones, and those are the two that I like the best, and I shared them with you guys and said, hey, which one do you guys like the best? And you guys overwhelmingly chose A. So that has become my new kind of avatar, it's actually down here in the YouTube corner, we're gonna make it the YouTube logo, it's gonna be all over the place, but I'm super happy with it. And I wanted to share with you, because I was so stoked with Quan's work, I wanted to share with you the illustration that he did that got my attention the first time around. So that is, let's pull this up, here we go, that is right here, Oop, here, there, there it is. That is the illustration. He did this just for fun of a whole bunch of famous YouTubers. Let me just zoom into this a little bit, and oops, wrong way. Uh, back up, there we go. And a lot of these you guys are going to probably recognize. Um, there's MKBHD, the guy that does the unboxing, unbox therapy, uh, I Justine, there's Casey Neistat up there. And he actually did another version of it. I asked him to put this together for me. Let me go to the next, there we go, where you actually have everybody's name on it. So this is just something that I asked for so I could identify all the people. So, because a lot of these guys I don't actually know. Um, which just gives me an idea of other YouTubers that I gotta watch. But I was so stoked with this. I just thought this is, that was so cool. He did that just for fun, just to kind of, well, try and get some attention, right? Why not? Do some artwork, put it out there on Twitter, see what happens. It obviously got a bit of attention. Um, I don't know if any of those guys saw it and shared it. If they did, awesome. If they didn't, then if any of you have a direct connection to any of those awesome YouTubers, and you can say, hey, tweet this guy's work. His stuff is really cool. That would be awesome. Give Quan a hand. But if you're looking for an illustration like that, reach out to him. So. Right here, I'm gonna put it up on the chat here so you can see it. Um, it is right here. This is his Twitter, Quan Ji He. So K-W-O-N underscore J-I underscore H-A-E. Um, Quan Ji He, he is, he is the guy. So if you wanna get some cool illustrations done, reach out to him. Uh, tell him I sent you. Tell him you came from my channel and that would be awesome. Okay, so that is that. Quan, thank you again for doing the awesome work. So let's get into this thing. So the whole idea is on your Lumix camera, on any camera, you have many different ways of controlling your, uh, your your focus point, where you want it to focus, right? You have your 255 or 225 or 8 million or whatever your camera has, different focus areas that can kind of be done automatically, but you can choose a focus point and then move that wherever you want. So you say, I want the camera to focus on the left bottom left corner or I want to focus on the center of the screen or you know, whatever. Depending on the camera, you can control that a variety of ways. Some cameras have a control panel, control pad on the back, kind of up, down, left, right. The latest line, well, the GH series cameras um, and the G9, so the GH5, GH5S, and the G9 have, and let me set up for this properly, let's see if I can zoom into this, have a tiny little joystick. Uh, let's just get that kind of close up there real quick. Um, sorry, I did not prep for this. Get a little joystick on here. It is, it's the wrong side. Excellent, I am, there it is. So, right. It's so hard to do this backward. That little guy right there. So this little joystick here, up, down, left, right, allows you to move the focus point around. Super cool, right? And that has become, and that's not new to cameras, that's new to Lumix cameras, um, but it's a great way to move your focus point around. But there's another way, and I don't know if this is totally unique to Lumix or if it's a unique to mirrorless. I have no idea if the Sony cameras do this or Olympus cameras, but the Lumix cameras do, and this is awesome. You can use this control surface as a trackpad when your eye is up to the camera. 
And this only applies when your eye is up to the camera, because if your eye is not up to the camera and you are just viewing the panel like this, then you can just touch the screen wherever you want it to focus, and it focuses there, and off you go. This is for specifically when you are eyes up to the camera with your thumb is conveniently placed right on that, that touchpad there, that, um, that LCD, and you can use it as a trackpad. So let me first show you how to turn it on, and then we're going to show you how it actually works, what it actually looks like. There's two different modes in here. So let's see. I'm going to open up the menu, and if I get this all set up right, here we go. There's the menu system. So we're looking in the wrench with the C on it. That's your custom menu. It's under operation, and you're going to find this in the same place on the GH5, GH5S, and G9. This nested menu is not there on older Lumix cameras, but you just have to find the command that says touch setting. So touch setting is what you're looking for. So if you don't have that sub-menu system, you got an older Lumix camera, just look for touch settings. It's there. I've done this on my GX8, my GX85. There, it's, it's pretty much everywhere. Okay, so you go into touch settings. Uh, touch screen has to be on, first of all. If it's not on, like if this is off, then everything else is unavailable. So right, that's fairly obvious. So we want to have our touch screen on. Touch tab and touch autofocus are different things. You can play with those. Touch autofocus means you touch the screen and it will focus where you touch or it'll focus and do exposure where you touch. That's cool. That's a separate thing that we're looking at today. What we're looking at here is this touchpad autofocus. And by default, it's going to be off because I think if you didn't know what it was doing, you could get confused pretty quickly. So this is something that you want to consciously activate. So touchpad AF is off. There's two modes. There's exact and offset. The best way that I can use to describe the difference here is exact is like using a Wacom tablet, where you have a tablet, you have a, a control surface, a thing in front of you, and when you take that pen, no matter where you touch, that's where the mouse goes, right? So if this is your tablet representing your screen, if you touch the tablet in the top right corner, the mouse instantly goes to the top right corner. If you touch the bottom left, the mouse instantly goes to the bottom left. Offset is more like a trackpad. When you've got a trackpad, if you touch here, the mouse doesn't jump to the top right corner, to get to the mouse at the top right corner, you can touch anywhere on the trackpad and you push the mouse up there, pull the mouse down to the bottom right. That's the difference between the two modes. And you can use whichever one you like, but I think the decision is going to be based largely off of how big your hands are. So let's, let's take a look first at, uh, at exact. So let's go into here. I'm going to set it to exact. Okay, so it's on the exact mode now. And now, let's see, let's go into this close-up view. Okay, so we've got, now you can see my thumb on here. Now, right now, you can see the display on the screen here because the whole idea is I need to have my eye put up to the screen. So let me cycle this. Right now, I'm in the LVF slash monitor auto mode, which means if I was to put my eye up to it, right, it switches. So it, this display, this thing is only going to work, this mode is only going to work when you're in this mode. I'm going to actually toggle over manually so I don't have to keep holding my finger over it. But now, watch on the left-hand side of the screen. Wherever I touch, the focus points jump to that. All right, so I'm looking through the viewfinder, and I could use the little joystick to move the focus point around, or I can simply touch the screen. Now, the problem is with using this system with the exact is this is really far away from me. So when my face is up to the screen, it's I can't really reach this very conveniently. So what I do is I go into the menu, and I set mine to be touchpad offset. And now in the offset mode, let's go back to this view. Now in the offset mode, I can, I can do all of my work on this, and I'm kind of exaggerating, making it extra slow, but I can do all of my work on one little side of the screen, which I can easily reach. And if I want to get it over to the other side quickly, I can kind of move my hand out and move it over quickly. Just kind of wrap my hand around. Let's go a little bit wider there. I can kind of do this if I need to move my focus point over there really quickly. But now when my face is being held up to the camera, so probably wouldn't have this on here. When you're up to the camera, I am now able to move my focus point by simply moving my thumb around on the back of the screen. And since we got the joystick, I've kind of gone back and forth, and I can't, I haven't really decided which one I like better. But if you don't have the joystick, then that's your only option to have that kind of control, other than moving the you know, up and down, left, right arrows, which takes forever. So this is a crazy cool thing to be able to do. So that's it. That's, that's the function. That's what I wanted to show you. So try it. If you've got a Lumix camera, give it a try. If you're not on a Lumix camera, then see, maybe you can find it. I, like I said, I don't know if it's on Sony or Olympus or whatever. Tell me in the comments. You're watching this. Comment down below. Are you, if you're using a Lumix camera, have you ever used this before? Do you like it? Some people don't like it. That's perfectly fine. That's why we have all these options. Do you like it? Don't you like it? Do you use it in offset or exact mode? And if you're not using a Lumix camera, tell me in the comments if you can find it. 
It does it exist on Olympus? Does it exist on Sony? I just don't know. I have no idea. But tell me in the comments. I'm sure that other people would like to know. Maybe somebody else with a Sony camera watching this will find your comment down below and you can tell us exactly how to get there and how to find it. So that is what I wanted to show you today. Now, before I step out of here, I'm, I've been really bad lately about doing this. I got to remember to tell you guys about things like my GH5 training, this super awesome training here, gh5training.com. Uh, check that out. It's five and a half hours worth of training on the GH5. Now, here's a little tidbit on there. I had promised when I released that, that I would do a follow-up uh, follow videos for version two of the firmware. And I am still planning on doing that. That will be a free add-on to anybody who already has the GH5 training. Now that the GH5S is out, I'm also going to do some separate videos specifically for the GH5S. That will not be a free add-on. That'll be an extra, I don't know, I'll charge you know, some dollar amount extra. So if you don't already have it, you'll be able to buy the entire GH5 plus the GH5S add-on for one price. Um, or you'll be able to buy just the GH5S add-on if you already have the GH5 training. So I do plan on doing that. Don't even have the camera yet, but um, as soon as I do and I've had some time with it, I will create that. And I'll create all of that together. So all of that is still coming. Um, also, don't forget that I do this photo, uh, photo apps expert for my photo apps expert brand. I do this live training over there. We've got another one coming up later this week on the 24th. What is that? Two days from now. That's Wednesday. Session 1504. We're looking at photos for macOS and iOS right now, and we're going to be taking a look at extensions. So that's where we're at today with all that stuff. So be sure to check all that out. So gh5training.com, check out the live training. It's all here on the YouTube and everywhere else. Um, quick little comments to see what's going on in here. Marcus uh, Nikolai. Nik Nikolai. Nikila, Nikila. Marcus Nikila. I think that's right. How many times have you accidentally pressed the touchscreen with your nose and changed the focus point? Very, very good point. Uh, it does happen. You just become a bit aware of it, I think, and you just tend to not smash your nose up to it when you're doing that. But yeah, it happens. Absolutely. Um, you just got to be a little bit more careful, I suppose. You get used to it, though. You do get used to it. And uh, Rich says, I'll have the G7. I'll check if it has it. The Lumix G7 does i'm i'm almost i'm almost positive it does i'm pretty sure this is this has been around for a long time um i know the first time i saw it was on the gx8 but i am quite sure that it's on the g7 can't promise that but i'm quite sure it is so that is mike says my nose is too big but apart from that this is great <laughs> yeah well you know sometimes you say you gotta you gotta do what you do okay that's that folks hey happy monday hope you had a good show hope you had a good weekend and uh we'll see we got the whole next like two weeks lined up with what we're going to do. Of course, I don't remember what they are right now. But um, let's actually, let's see. What is Wednesday's show going to be? I can pull that up right here. I can look and see. Let's see, there's Trackpad show. Oh, is this Wednesday's? I got some prep work to do. Wednesday's show is going to be a biggie. Wednesday's show is going to be, waiting for the graphic to load, is going to be this. GH5 versus G9. Should you trade? The whole idea behind the show is if you have a GH5 already and you're thinking, Ooh, the G9 came out. I do more stills than video. Should I trade in my GH5 and get a G9? That is the question we're going to try and answer. We're going to highlight the differences, explore in detail what one does over the other, and help you make that decision whether it is worth trading in or whether you should stick with the GH5 that you have. So this came up because I'd gotten several emails about this, and um, most people that I emailed and had the discussion about said, you know what, I don't need the G9, the GH5 does everything that I need. Uh, and I thought, you know, this will make a good show. Let's talk about this at length, at depth, and make sure that you guys can make the right decision. All right, last question. Bruce says, hi, I got the 45 to 150 millimeter lens over the weekend. Awesome. It was on sale Saturday for $100, $100 off. Can't argue with that. And I fell asleep and woke up at 2 a.m. and the price went up everywhere for went up everywhere for 250 instead of the sale price. So you got a crazy bargain? Is that what you're saying? I hope you're saying that you got a crazy bargain, which would be awesome. Excellent, Bruce. Everybody loves a bargain. So everybody else who's looking at that going, I want that bargain. It sounds like you are too late. Sorry to say. All right, folks, that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in on this happy Monday morning. I hope you have a great week in front of you, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.